Welcome everybody to King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. Yay! Yay. And yeah, there's no Jova here. <laughs> no, Jova is not that very... The Jova doesn't find it, doesn't like this particular game in the series, but he will join us in the next uh, commentaries. Yes. Yes. So, a little bit of history, Pedro. Alright, so this game originally came out in 1984. It was developed uh, by Sierra Online, designed and written by Roberta Williams. Um... They're, and this remake we're playing right now is a, made by AGD Interactive. And uh, who are they? Basically, it's a, a, an awesome uh, independent devel developer who are huge fans of point-and-click adventure games, particularly uh, Sierra ones. And uh, they want. And this was back in 2001. Yes, this game actually was originally made in 2001. This the version we're pl I'm playing right now is the four. It's the 4.1 version, which had a lot of updates and uh, fixes. But yeah, which included um, narration tracks. Yes, exactly. But uh, basically, this is this remake is actually based on the 1990 uh, remake that Sierra themselves made. Um, uh, but uh, but of course, that remake, since we've made it 1990 before King's Quest V, it mm -hmm. still has the text yeah. interface. So they decided to make this remake to you know fully update it to King's Quest V engine and shit. King and they had both the text. And voice. Yeah, you can, As you can, uh, yeah, you can. Castle. That's an interesting thing that they also do. Yeah, unknown. that you can. Um... Well, also, yeah, the, the narrator in this game is voiced by John Bell. Indeed. Greetings, sir. Who's John Bell? Please Basically, he's a, from what I could tell, is a professional voice actor, but he doesn't have that much under his belt. Thank you, Sir Knight. And yes, that, they actually got Josh Mendel back from King's Quest V and VI to it, do the voice of Graham again. Which is a great thing because it's interesting because uh, the developers yep. said that they originally weren't thinking of having voice acting because. Uh, you know, back then game fan games were, you know, kind of a new thing. Uh, so they didn't really want to, to take a risk uh, with it. But then when the, there was someone in their forum who said, you know, oh, I actually have the content of Josh Mandel. Maybe we could, uh, and he, maybe we could get him to voice on the game. Uh, yet. And, uh, and uh, they actually got in contact with Josh Mandel. And Josh Mandel thought he was totally up for voicing uh, Graham in these remakes. So that was pretty awesome. So they completely changed their minds purely based on the fact that they were actually going to be able to have the original voice of Graham. So that's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, nice. Anyway, the story of the actual game is pretty simple. As the narrator told, you're the knight of a very, very soon be troubled king of, of Daventry. The old king, now in, in charge, is a bit of a, you know, uh, doofus, should I say, because he lost three treasures and the kingdom basically screwed up if, if you don't recover them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, by, so, so, and also. First, sorry. Yeah, that. Yeah, first the magic mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Then Captain America. How many King's Shield Quest games will there be? <laughs> and then a, a chest where it's always filled with gold. Yeah. How many King's Quest games will there be? There will be nine. Um, I thought there was eight. No, nine. They're making another one coming out later this year. Yeah, and there's a fan-made... Well, there's technically a fan-made King's Quest 9, even though it's no, it's no longer called King's Quest 9. It. But, uh, but it's basically their, their attempt at trying it's, it's, to get... It's just, it's just called King's Quest. No, 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 it's actually called Silver Lining. Basically, it's a, a fan-made... King's Quest IX, that, 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 where they're trying to, you know, end the series in a better way than King's Quest VIII did. But that, Although, isn't that what they're doing? Isn't what they're what Sierra are officially doing now? Well, uh, no, 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 no. The new one is a reboot. It's, it's. I, actually, I've heard. Um, actually, I've heard from the odd gentleman who are making that. It's not really that much of a reboot. Oh, really? Hmm. So, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see for ourselves when we actually play it. I will. I know I will because, well, I still want to give the game a chance, uh, even though I'm skeptic about it. Exactly the same way as yeah. The EGA um, <laughs> I, I, it, look, it looks fine to me so far, but then again, I'm not a King's Quest guy, so. Uh, all right. So basically, you can all. Uh, one cool thing about this remake is that it, you, you can play. You can turn off dead ends, aka make it impossible for you to get stuck. However, uh, I am. Yep. However, I learned this game like the palm of my hand, so I don't need that. I'm going to play old, the old-fashioned way. Yes, yes. So, yeah. so yeah, as you can tell, he knows the thing with the palm of his hand. But first, um, let's adjust some things in the settings and save the game. And now, oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, here's one of the big appealing points of King's Quest: the deaths. The deaths. <laughs> yeah, you you can basically die from anything. Yeah. 
<laughs> the moat monsters appreciate your good taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I wonder what he tasted like, actually. I don't know. So anyway, um, yeah. If you, if you die, you better hope you're saved, because if you didn't, you're going to go all the way back to the beginning. For, uh, yeah. it, it, it solves cool difficulty in yeah, uh, point and click um, games. Yeah, but, but, it, it works but, fine. Um, it works um, fine um, because um, the safe the safe system works exactly like an emulator safe state, so you can make as many yeah. saves as you want. So if 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 you do your yep. if if you take care to save regularly, it won't really become a problem. Yes, which is which is which is which is another reason why Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> the moving yeah. rock <laughs> downhill mm -hmm. and yeah. right into you, you can you a can crushing really, you, you can actually die by rolling a rock in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah. But I was just gonna say games where you're not really prompted to save, you have to do it by yourself, and there's no water save feature. In a game like this, considering the time it was originally made, that's fine. But with, with a, a game like Angel shell, of Darkness, you when you know, around the time the that came out, feet, that kind of pisses me off. A yeah. hole no, I, I agree. with the fact that the game was shit. I, I agree, I agree, definitely. <laughs> Alright, so... Anyway, we what's inside? We found a, a, a dagger. dagger. Awesome. You carefully lift okay. it out, being careful not to cut yourself. Yeah, Alright, now, uh, now what I'm going to be showing off for a bit is uh, the level You're of detail that these spirit. games have. A large no large other game has more detail hole, than a Sierra Adventure game. Uh, you can literally yep. lo use the cursor to look at anything, this and the narrator will actually have something to say about it. it. Yep, and you, uh, even with You're talk a icon, in, and in other Sierra games, there are even other type of icons that you can use. Like, if I recall correctly, is in Leisure Suit Larry, you can lick or taste yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, uh, you can, yeah. Or something. Let's try talking to the rock. That's strange, you don't get an answer. <laughs> yeah, really strange. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's strange, you don't get an answer. Oh, wonderful. Okay. But yeah, basically, this remake was made um, uh, using the the same king, the, the king's, the AG Adventure Game That's Studio. Strange. What is the Adventure Game Studio engine? Basically, it's a fan made engine specifically for the purpose of making games in the style of King's Quest Five and Six, creatures aka Sierra Adventure Games from the Golden Age. Uh, so that's pretty much what this game is trying to do. It's trying to basically emulate the the, the look and feel of King's Quest V. King Edward's castle, which, which was really fine because you know it, even even for the time that the art style was you know good enough to be solid even these days. Yeah, definitely because it, it, which is interesting because uh, this like the the look of the game it looks exactly like something Sierra would have made back in the day. The, the handmade yep. backgrounds. Uh, the, the sprites, the way they're animated, they're, like it—it it, it just screams old school Sierra. The, the, yep. you, can, you can tell. You can tell you, these guys. You can tell. Go ahead. Yeah, I knew what we were doing. Yeah. These stone-faced guards must have been trained not to converse with anybody. They ignore you. I Sir made for fun at parties. <laughs> so yeah, uh, combine that with the a genuine voice of Graham from the old games. This is pretty much uh, as faithful of a remake as you uh, you'll ever get. Yep. Pretty much the definitive version of King's Quest Five, uh, King's Quest One, definitely. This is the biggest oak tree you've ever seen. Its trunk seems to be about ten uh -huh. feet around, oh, and boy. the thick, sturdy branches look like they could hold many times your weight. All right, let's try climbing it. Sure. Finding plenty <laughs> of footholds in the coarse bark of the tree, you easily clamber up the trunk to the branches above. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> And the, the climbing animation is actually better than the ones of the characters in Enter the Matrix, now when I look about it. <laughs> That's sad, really. <laughs> yeah. Considering this game. Kind of, it's sad. When, when a 3D model do, does a bad, uh, worse climbing animation than a 2D sprite. Ouch. Oh, but Ow. you're actually still alive. Yeah, I can actually, surprisingly, I can actually fall off on this tree and survive. Yeah, <laughs> and that, that's really unusual. To King's Quest, because you know, well, then again, what's most unusual is that Graham can die when he's only like three inches in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, well, since there's not much going on story-wise right now, allow me to take a, 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 a take a look at the manual of the original game because the manual actually gives us some important backstory on the story. Grade. So uh, allow me to uh, read this. <clears throat> A long time ago, when unicorns still roamed the forests and the merfolk still dwelt in the shallow waters frequented by men, there ruled in the kingdom of Daventry King Edward and his lovely queen. 
The people of Daventry were prosperous and happy, and everywhere peace reigned. But the king and queen were sad because they were childless. They had no son to inherit the throne, nor a daughter to gladden their hearts. Aww. That's sad. That's sad. One bright sunny day, King Edward the Benevolent, or for so he was called, and his queen were walking in the castle garden when suddenly before them appeared a powerful sorcerer. I know your problem, and I can cast a spell that will bring you a child, he said. Oh, great sorcerer, if you can help us, we will be everlastingly grateful, said the queen. We will bestow upon you many you honors, great big, riches. meaty looking walnut from the bunch scattered around. Indeed. Uh, so, uh, I have no use for honors or riches. My payment walnut, will not be so great. All I ask in return is the is mahogany frame gold. mirror that hangs in your private chamber, a.k.a. the magic mirror that foretells the future that he said he lost. The sorcerer's words gave them pause, for that mirror was priceless. But well, uh, it helped to keep Daventry prosperous. The royal couple used it to foretell the weather, not plant uh, for planting an harvest. So yeah, basically the king and queen are cheating. They're not really good no. king and queen. They're, they're, just, small they're just using magic to ordinary. solve their problems. You notice something written. Yep. It. So that's interesting. Oh, and I love this magic bowl. Believe it or not, this is actually a magic bowl. How do I know? Let's take a look at it. Inscribed on the inside of this empty ceramic bowl is the word Phil. Phil, huh? Oh. All right, let's try it. Mm. saying Phil. To your oh. astonishment, something begins to bubble up from the bottom of the bowl. Within moments, the bowl is filled with a hot, savory... So yeah, this is another feature of King's Quest. You can literally find somewhere in the middle of the ground magical items like this. <laughs> Don't ask why. It happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Uh, all oh right. my god. We will bestow upon him. Okay. But, so basically, um, what the source of desire was that King Edward and his wife gazed into the mirror's desk. And, uh, so basically, they went to consult the mirror. And the mirror actually uh, showed uh, a young princely figure with a gold crown on his head, imagining the youth to be the son they yearned for. The royal couple gladly bestowed the mirror upon the sorcerer. He took it to his dwelling. I mean, blah, blah. what could possibly go wrong? The maps passed <laughs> and the queen did not conceive a child. For the first time in 400 years, Daventry lost the harvest to an early autumn rainstorm. The king and queen wept and everyone let thunder bolts. Okay, with famine came the plague and the queen was stricken with, with, uh, uh, with a, a disease. Uh, on the fourth day of the queen's illness, a diminutive figure, uh, a dwarf, basically, uh, came and said, Oh, I have traveled a great distance to bring relief to your dear wife. This powerful root, not only to dwarves, will cure any plague. So the dwarf leaned over to... So, and, and, as you can probably guess, in, in return for giving her this healing root... Oh, you have to give me your chest that is always full of gold, though. So... Yeah. The old actually, no, wait, no, um, the shield, the actually, sorry. The, the, that's the, sh the, the chest is another thing, okay. This the shield. You have to give me your shield. And, and, uh, what is the shield? Basically, the shield is the, one who, the shield who protects anyone from all mortal harm and shit. So, obviously, in, uh, desperate to save his wife... Uh, he gave it to her. I uh, gave the, the, the shield to the to the dwarf, and the dwarf never appeared again. Obviously, <laughs> you the queen was saved, the but okay. So, so basically, the queen was not saved. Actually, sorry, and the the queen died. So years passed. The king was very lonely, but one day he met uh, Princess Dahlia of Cumberland. Basically, a new uh, and he fell in love with him, and uh, he he remarried. However, the night before the, the wedding, Princess Dahlia good, bid Edward good night, and he never noticed her hand stealing up to his belt and extracting the King of Keys. And there, so basically, it was a, she he was the Sadatras who stole the, the magic chest. The cool water. So yeah, basically, all these treasures actually belonged to Daventry before the king was dumbly. And look at that! Of... Here's the magic shield. <laughs> um. All right, Hello so, there. so what can we do? For a water edit. <laughs> Good shot. That will work. The water hits the dragon square still in the there? face, dousing his fire. Ah, okay. He's still burped. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, so what, is the dragon having a coughing fit? No, we just threw no, water at him, and we're, we're going to Silent Hill. Unable to we threw we we Silent Hill, the PS, the, the PS3 version. We threw water into its nostrils, which, which dosed off its flame, and now he can't uh, uh, breathe fire. So he retreats in in shame. And there we go. There's the magic mirror. So yeah, like I was saying, the, the, all these free treasures used to belong to Daventry, but until the king lost you them because of his uh, because mirror. you know con being conned and tricked out of. Uh, in the in the original one, in the original 1984 game, 
Um, there was no mention of, of all this backstory. Uh, we just mentioned, oh, there's there's free, there's these free treasures out there somewhere, and I want you to get them. So for all we know, we're just stealing these things to make our kingdom uh, better. However, when it came time to make the 1990 remake, Roberta decided to actually improve upon that and actually can see, uh, can, uh, write this backstory uh, to make it yeah. to actually make it this quest a little more noble in nature. So yeah, let's try to continue to save. Oh, look, a goat. Yeah, just to, yeah. I hope it doesn't. Hope it doesn't uh, try and impede Ra progress. Ram in that stuff. Uh, yeah. That's for. The, don't worry. We'll see that in the king, in the king, in the death videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, clover field. You pick a large four-leaf clover from the patch. Yay! Well, four-leaf clover should give me good luck. So let's let's carry with us. Hey, look, the carrot patch of the castle. Let's take a carrot. Sure. You pluck a plump orange carrot from the ground. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's get. Let's keep going. And there we go. Well, another cool. Another cool thing about um, these games is that uh, since everything is on a painted background, uh, most of the things that can actually, uh, most of the things that are interactable are actually sprites. So they're very. It's very easy to tell what you can interact with. Yeah, what's with. painted in the background and what is interactable. Yeah. So, okay, so now we have a carrot. Let's try tempting the goat with a carrot. Sure. Per but first, let's save. Yeah, it's, it's better to do, always. So, yeah, back in the day, this game was... Uh, I mean, there was a huge uh, inflation of within click adventures for PC gaming. Uh, especially, of course, from Sierra oh, and LucasArts, uh, particularly. Yeah. There was... Uh, three majors from Sierra were this, uh, Space friend. Quest and Leisure Suit Larry. Then there were uh, Quest for Glory, Police Quest and other minor games. LucasArts mainly had uh, Monkey Island, Sam and Max Hit the Road, uh, Full Throttle, and then eventually it had uh, Green Fandango. You exactly. know, made by, 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 by Team Schaefer. Indeed. Be before that, um, before the shenanigans of him happened. Inside yeah, the watch that again. Stuff, you notice a small leather pouch. You know, Tim Schafer with a sock puppet. As you <laughs> uh, I don't know you what happened, and I probably should inside. not should not know. <laughs> the uh, the leather pouch, nowadays, the only develop with the only mainstream developer out there who still uh, does with some point and click of, uh, adventure games was uh, Telltale, who made the Back to the Future video game, and they also revived the Monkey Island series. Uh, yeah, and even Seven Max also. Yeah, they were very good, and um, and the sad part is that uh, Telltale actually got the rights from Activision to try to make a point-and-click uh, reboot of the series at some point. Oh, and yeah. the, the, uh, unfortunately, Activision pulled out on the deal, and we never got to see bridge, anything about the game, which is a shame because I really, I, I really would love to see what a Telltale away. King's Quest would have been like. Ah uh, yes, uh, a, king, the a King's, a king's Quest part with pizza. Oh, <laughs> The problem with Telltale is that they're not a huge, uh, big developer. So a lot of times they do licensed products, like, of course, Back to the Future, uh, The Walking Dead, or more recently Game of Thrones, or either do cross collaboration with other companies, like recently with Gearbox, uh, in order to do Tales from the Borderlands. Indeed. So, yeah, if you know your fairy, fairy tale lore correctly, you would know that goats and trolls are natural enemies. So, we use the goat to take care of the troll. That's another thing, thing you'll have to get used to in these commentaries, everybody. Uh, the King's Quest series is literally swimming in fairy tale yep. lore. Yep. You permit can that, find our reference. That, yep. Permit that for you're going to say me eating. Oh. No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> All right, so oh, a hobby house. <laughs> it's actually not, but uh, we'll see. We'll I see. Know, I know. It, it's shaped kind of like that. It's, it's it's weird considering Lord of the Rings came out in two thousand one. Even though, well, it's largely based on the illustration of uh, I can't remember the name of the art artist. An artist who drew official artworks from the book, uh, according in uh, in tandem with Tolkien himself. Uh, the, basically, Why Peter Jackson took inspiration from them to create uh, elements for the movies. 
Look at anyway, that. we found an elf. Leave the last look. The elf is impressed by your friendliness <laughs> and responds by handing you an elegant little ring. I've had me okay. Ah. That, that's a fucking bat, not an elf. So. <laughs> has the power to make ye invisible. May it give ye as much entertainment as ye has given me this day. So I gave you entertainment that, just from talking to you? Vanishes. Also, little elf, you need to do something with your haircut. Whatever. <laughs> Oh, well, I got ourselves a ring that will make us invisible, so that's all cool. Ooh. All right, so let's keep exploring the land of Daventry. It, it, that's an interesting thing, because, again, we actually get to explore Daventry in the first game. So keep that in mind for how Daventry looks for when we get to King's Quest VIII, because King's Quest VIII, it, it boggles my mind how the Daventry in King's Quest VIII looks nothing like Daventry. This is a world they created. Or, uh, and they still so they, they, yeah they basically, basically did the same uh, they did with Ultima Nine basically basically Dwebs, um, if you want to get a, a good uh, uh, basically Dwebs, if you want to get a good uh, look uh, a good sum up look at uh, King's Quest Eight you can always check out Paul Duggan's King's Quest retrospective because it does a really great job uh, oh oh the woodcutter speaks to you his voice broken with sorrow we would welcome you to our home sir knight but wow that cool master's no broke for so long. <laughs> my beautiful wife cannot even rise from her bed i fear she may die soon. that's the thing back in the day i probably should should tell since it's the first game of the series uh back in the day i used to play uh the the, the these games uh these King's Quest games uh, on my on my old PC, so Thank they were not you. they were the original Thank version. So these uh, uh, remakes are actually you know my first experience with them, and now I can I, see, I can see the difference with them. Back in the Please, day, it was another story because you know uh, you need to type in uh, yeah. your actions as we, other as, than you know as we'll see around. as we'll see when we get to King's Quest Four. Because yeah, uh, there's actually. no, there's there's still no modern remake for that one, so we, I'll have to play the original one with that. Yeah. So yeah, basically it was typing. You know, obviously the graphics were you know more choppy and pixelated, and uh, basically there were a lot of trial and error stuff. <laughs> like, and combining that to the fact that I barely knew English back in the day, it was quite an experience. Yeah, but eventually I made it, uh, you know, stealing myself uh, with <laughs> these, and they were fun. You grab you know. some pebbles. Uh, question: Did you was the was the which version of King's Quest one did you play? The original nineteen eighty four one or the nineteen ninety remake? I actually can't remember because well, uh, well, did it, did it look incredibly picked? Well, actually, hold on, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to tell from from hold on. Again, uh, sadly, was a, lo a bit, a bit of a long time ago. True, but I still think I can jog your memory with this. Sure, sure. All right, here's one. Are you trying to trigger an event where you could get either squashed or captured by someone? Uh, I'm trying to. Uh, what am I doing right now? Let me let me see, let me see if I can remember. I have, Again, I've recorded the I, speed of sound. I, I've recorded this a while ago, so I don't remember my exact mindset at the time. Uh, right now, I'm just exploring. I think I'm. Just, I think right now, I'm just ex mostly just exploring, f seeing what I can find. Uh, Ram the explorer. Yeah, exploration is key in this game. Um, yep, you have a halfway done already. Jesus. Well, yeah, this game was really short. Uh, most of the most of the time, uh, these games, aside from maybe King's Quest Two, the remake, and King's Quest Six, these games could be completed in a really short amount of time if you know exactly what to do. Again, most of the yeah. the challenge in this game is actually figuring out the puzzles and exploring, finding the correct places and shit. Okay, so, uh, so there yeah. you go. Uh, this is the the original 1984 AGI version, and this is the remake that was made in 1990 using the King's Quest Four engine. See, does that any, does do these two pictures jog oh, Okay, in? yeah, it was, it was definitely the latter, the the one using the King's Quest Four engine. Yeah, because uh, the AGI version, uh, because this one actually had some put and click. Uh, you can actually put and click to where you want to go with this one, whereas in the AGI version, you had to use the keyboard. Also, that sounds like fun. Nah, it works fine, honestly. Yeah. In these remakes, oh, look, uh, in, in these remakes, they, in these remakes, they actually also included the possibility to and use the keyboard to move around. Door. So that's pretty cool. Voice from inside oh, the house oh boy. Answers. Who 
always there. I love visitors. Uh, that's reassuring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's let, let's totally go in, guys. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> As you begin to eat the house, a squeaky oh, voice boy. from somewhere says, Yeah, that's not. Nibble, nibble, little mouse. Who is nibbling? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, I know my Ansel and Gretel. Let's wait till the witch is actually out of the house. Yeah, it's better. In fact, I think what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to see if I can get her out of the to, house. Yeah, to lure the witch out, if I recall. As you knock on the chocolate door, a squeak. Okay, let's skip that. Um, okay, basically, uh, right now I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact circumstances where the witch... With a oh, there she is. A cackle. Oh. Huh. oh boy. Ah. Basically, you have to react. Ah. To, basically, you have to react fast when the narrator warns you of the witch coming. Yeah, otherwise you're dead, basically. As you knock on the chocolate is that? Yeah, okay. Basically, the way the, the this by the when I was playing this uh, th this particular playthrough, I I I forgot that uh, the problem is that um I forgot what was the triggers the, the witch going away. The witch going away, you have to talk to the elf first before it triggers. Yeah. And there's a very good reason for that because uh there's a clue to the elf to the elf's puzzle in in in, in her and house. You knock on the chocolate. So basically, right now I can't go in there. So we'll have to come back here later. Eat the house again. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can actually eat the, uh, the house once, from, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he, he did. He you did before. Mm -hmm. Dude, stop thinking about eating. I am eating. Mm. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> You're already feeling your belly. Don't feel your mind with these thoughts too. And of course, I'm eating pizza, which is ironic because one of our members is from Italy. Da, 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 da. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. All right. So the next piece of uh, treasure that I'm gonna get is the chest. She oh. Got you. She... Oops. She got me. Actually... Maybe, maybe not. Oops. Ouch. Well. Ouch. At least you're in the house now. As the wicked witch flew over her cottage, she dropped you straight through the roof and into her cage. Who knows what sinister plans she has in store oh. for you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Whoa! How nice. You, you're 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 a gingerbread straw man. Has turned you into a gingerbread man. Or is that, or is that, a, that a graham, graham cracker? cracker. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fortunately, I saved. So oh, that's my, that's my favorite King's Fox. Quest One death. <laughs> oh, the the Graham Cracker one. My favorite. Yeah. My favorite in King's Quest One is probably um, the. Looks like you've had a bad fall this spring. <laughs> <laughs> sp yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's got you. All right. Don't worry. Yep, I'll, don't she worry. Did that again. Don't. Don't, <laughs> don't worry. I'll skip the lines this time. Serious. Don't worry, Dwebs. I'll skip the lines this time. Lord Dweebs. As the See, there you go. If you if you skip the lines, it, it, it it's it's really it's the instantaneous. Has turned you into a gingerbread there we go. We're back. Okay, I'll be right back again. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever uh, the hell he's doing. All right. So basically, okay, let's uh, try to outraise the witch this time around, maybe. No, no. Uh, this is where, if I remember correctly, this is where I actually give up on trying because I. Uh, hold on. I, I think I'm doing something wrong. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's probably not the time yet. Okay. Knock, knock, motherfucker. As you knock. Okay. Oh. We know that. Okay. Like I said, we need to wait. Uh, we need to do this after talking to the elf. So. I think I I think that's what I'm gonna do now, if I remember correctly. But I think it's but it's only on the second part. Yeah, you're just wandering around, if I recall. Right now, yeah, I don't I don't really accomplish anything for uh, in the remainder of this part. I'm just trying to. I might might as well use these to explain the point system. 
<laughs> All right, yeah. There's uh, basically uh, a total of five cursors. The walking cursor, the eye cursor, the hand cursor, and the talking cursor. So basically, no, no, I was talking about the points in the On the corner. top right corner. Oh, the points. Uh, okay, basically, every time you accomplish anything in this game, anything like picking up an object or walking. solving a puzzle, like anything really, you gain a point. Uh, and uh, the point system is actually very flexible. Like, for example, I, I defeated the dragon by throwing water at him. That's the solution that gives me the most points and allows me to reach the, the full 158 points. However, I can also throw a dagger at it. I can also... Um, but basically, there are multiple ways I can solve uh, most of these puzzles. And the yep. basically, the more thoughtful one uh, gives me more points, and the cheapest and easiest one gives me less points. I basically, they're just there for completion is bonus, not really basically uh just for bragging rights basically say, but they're still the... fun to uh in order to they stimulate you to find the most creative ways to obtain them i gotta say one of my favorite out of all the king's quest videos we've seen my most fav one of my most favorite deaths has to be the one way where you wait so wait in, in king's quest 3 oh boy where you have to you have to get you have to go to uh daventry but then but then um you fall down and you're like uh that's that's the quickest way to reach Daventry, but definitely not the safest. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty anyway. That's, that's that's the punishment for speedrunning. One one of the ones that I love most. One of the ones that I love really good at King's Quest Three is uh, when we well, when we uh, screw up at the, um, the 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 bridge puzzle and then we fall and go Grav gravity one equivalent uh, zero. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See everybody for the next See, part. Yeah.